The Saturday Night Live character, Pat. You yell if you remember Pat. Did you like Pat? <laughs> you loved Pat. Because, because Pat was funny. Okay? Pat was funny. Matter of fact, Pat was a hit character on Saturday Night Live. You couldn't wait to talk about Pat at work. You couldn't wait to go to school and talk about Pat. They made a movie, a movie called It's Pat. Okay? And people lined up like, ah! And the, the reason, the character is called Pat because you don't know if it's Patrick or Patricia. So that's why it was funny, fat, hit character, movie. So, so here's what blows my mind. I'd say like in the last three months, I've seen at least a thousand pets. <laughs> Never had a problem with a bat. Never, beautiful human beings. I'm just, I'm like, I used to laugh at this character. And I'm like, now the characters are real. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Am I the asshole? What am I going on? And is it me or is Starbucks the manufacturer for pets? Great service, beautiful human beings. I'm just, just saying. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, my biggest trouble is uh, Fat Jimmy. And, yeah, Fat Jimmy only comes out after a few cocktails. Um, see, I, I don't drink. I'm not a drinker. If I drink, it has to be going to dinner. I don't drink in my house. Uh, if my wife and I are going out to dinner, I'll have a couple cocktails. And that's when Fat Jimmy always comes out. My wife can't stand Fat Jimmy because he's messy, he's gross, he makes a mess. Um, and so, you know, I saw two gin martinis. And I get the lecture, Jim, stop right now. Because you're going to start eating all the bread, then you're going to have olive oil, and then you're going to want cheese and the red pepper flakes, and you're going to eat all that. Then you're going to order an appetizer, then you're going to eat my appetizer. You're going to eat your meal, you're going to have creme brulee, then you're going to have an after-dinner drink. Then you're going to go home and eat a bunch of crap in your system, and then stare at your face in the morning, and go, why did you stop me? Well, I'm telling you right now, stop it. But as soon as that buzz kicks in, I, it's like a black bear just coming in an empty log home. <laughs> oh, he doesn't stop either. Cream brulee on the shirt. My wife's calling ahead to the kids, lock all the cabinets and hide everything. But it's too late. I come down that hallway from the garage. <laughs> the kids are running in their rooms with like lime tostitos. No, you can't. My wife's got the dust buster. She's just waiting. There's no, there's no opening things patiently. It's just popping the bags open. <laughs> I 
out of control. See about, see about my wife smart. She knows how to fight Fat Jimmy now. She watches me every, every time we stop at a convenience store. Fat Jimmy stares at the little mini donuts. The white powdered donuts, the sugar powdered donuts. There's a little package. It's always on the end of the... It's always right there so you can see it. A cling cling! <laughs> So, so when I'm in a rage, she got me good. I was in it, and then she goes, here, I was saving this, but you might as well have it now. Enjoy it. Boom. And so I just was like, a big salmon and I whipped it open I started eating that thing she started waiting patiently because she knows and everyone in here knows it's not food it's cement with like baby powder and you don't realize that till you start chewing it and it's not dissolving and it's sticking to the roof of your mouth and you try to swallow it, it's halfway down, but it's going nowhere. And then you suck in and the powder starts choking you. <laughs> you, get, you get the faucet on. <laughs> What a mess. <laughs> so besides Fat Jimmy, I feel pretty healthy. <laughs> this was just what I was getting to. Like, I don't, I don't want to be on... I don't want to be on blood thinners. I don't want to be a blood thinner. What a, what a racket. So, hey, listen, your, your arteries are clogged, you're a mess. <laughs> right? You got high cholesterol, you know, runs in the family, whatever we like telling you. <laughs> Has nothing to do with your diet. Uh, <laughs> or the amount of alcohol you would take just trash your body and eat crap all day. Has nothing to do with that. <laughs> So we have this pill. They give you, they give you blood thinners. Uh, this will keep you alive. It'll help the blood get through all that garb, you know, the thick. And the... <laughs> the only thing is, try not to bump into anything. <laughs> have you, have you ever, ever seen? I was just checking. Um, have you ever lost my train of thought? Where was I? Where? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just him. Yeah, but what I was talking about before that, have you ever seen? Blood pitters, thank you. I saw, I, saw, I saw the camera light on. It was like, you take the robot, man. <laughs> turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> yeah, don't bump into anything. Have you ever seen the poor elderly on, on blood thinners? Yeah. You know how many people I've made squirt out, not realizing I almost killed them by a handshake? <laughs> oh, is your uncle? How are you doing? <laughs> It's not your fault. He's on blood thinners. He's gonna get me some cause. <laughs> um, right? 
you can't go hiking with elderly on blood thinners. They can scrape against a, a little leaf and next thing you know, they're bleeding out for the next quarter of a mile and they don't even know it. I'm feeling pretty light at it today. There's <laughs> coyote scents in the blood. Coyotes to be out during the day. <laughs> so, uh, I tear the calf. And I gotta go to rehab, which is so embarrassing for me. My ego, everything's getting tested. <laughs> Growing up in Long Island, you break your leg, you break your arm. You sprain your leg, you, you got crutches, that's what you did in school. What's going on? Uh, I gotta have these for like four weeks or something. I'm still playing kickball though. Uh, so, you know, I'm sitting there, I walk in the rehab, and, uh, I said, ah, oh, my calf, and, and a young girl comes up, she's maybe 23, and to me, that's a baby. 23, that's my oldest daughter, and she's just, hi, Mr. Brewer. No. And what do you do for a living? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> What am I gonna give the resume? Well, it's funny. You are. Uh, you would like to know whose calf you've been working on. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the actor Joe Pesci? Who's that? Jesus Christ! I really am past the times. <laughs> and she knows her stuff, and I see her whole. She's got her confidence of her life that lies ahead of her. She did the nursing school, and here she is. She's gonna fix, but. I'm just looking at her and like, oh my God, it's my daughter. There's, there's still a little, there has to be a little in there. <laughs> and I can't get over that. It's so weird. My daughter's so smart, but there's, you know. <laughs> And that's when I realized, too, that I'm the youngest human being in this rehab center. <laughs> by far. I mean, it's Florida. Everyone's like 75, 80, and they don't want to be here. You know, I'm there with my calf, just stretching the calf. There's a guy in the back just yelling, screaming, I don't want to keep walking. <laughs> You, and you know he's a problem because the whole family's with him. Dad, stop it. You have to keep walking. <laughs> the doctors are coming here and everyone's getting mad at you. Everyone's... Yeah, other elderly are yelling, Just do what they tell you, for Christ's sake! And then you can get out of here. None of us want to be here. You want a blood clot for crying? was stubborn, just like you! I want to sit down now! <laughs> then there's a lady, she's, she's fixing her, she's on the arm machine. And she's got the oxygen. <laughs> I think she's trying to take herself out because 
Because every once in a while, she'd look around and then take the tube out. It's weird when you watch yourself. Uh, I just look at my physical body. Right. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta, I like the way my upper body looks, but I, I'm not, I'm not, I gotta, I gotta work on the back fat. That's always, it's so weird. That's all I'm looking at. I'm like, <laughs> back fat. God, like, am I that wide? Do I look fat to it? My head, my head's a little big. I gotta start working on a head. I gotta, I gotta take it down level. <laughs> That's all I say. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I'm getting over a cold, man. That's another thing. I don't know if it was my body from last week playing ball, but the minute was over, I just I can feel. Yeah, you know, it was 150 guys. Someone in there was sick. A lot of close talkers. I hate if you're a close talker, stop it. Back up. There's no reason for you to be close. We can hear you. Back up. There's no just because your mom didn't listen to you, or your father didn't listen to you when you're growing up. I'm listening to you. Back up. Um, if people are just listening to this, I highly suggest going on YouTube to watch it because I, I forgot, I forget how physical I am and, and the faces and all that jazz. It's, it's wow. All right. So we're going to go into my buddy, Joe Sib. So Joe Sib, let me explain how Joe Sib came into my life. So I had an agent not an agent, I had a, um, a publicist and the publicist, I forgot. Oh, was, I, I came out with the rock album, which you hear on this, uh, on this podcast a lot. A lot of people ask me, Hey, where, where are those songs from? Uh, the beginning of this podcast, you heard the song thrash. Uh, and I, I sang with Brian Johnson of ACDC. I, I love the album. It was going to be a whole concept album. And some of the Patreon members are kind of pushing me to, do something fun with it. And yeah, maybe I'm toying maybe now in this arena with the podcast and all that I'll, I'll develop the way I originally visualized it. It was supposed to be kind of funny and metal and family. Um, so that's what I was doing. I was doing the rounds and then Chris, I got an interview with Chris from the Foo Fighters, the guitarist. And I went into that podcast room and Joe Sibs there and he's like, Hey dude, big fan. Hey, dude, bro, bro, big fan, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'd love, you know, I'd, I'd love to, um, you know, I do stand up too and da, 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 and I want a copy of the album. So with that said, my publicist goes, hey, remember that podcast you did? I was playing San Diego and I needed an opener. And she was, uh, this guy, Joe Sib, was with Chris from the Foo Fighters. 
about. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. A lot of you might not know this about Joe Sid, but he used to be a punk rocker. He was in this band called Wax. And Chris used to play with him. A guy, one of the guys from um, uh, the, the series Jackass, the guy, I forgot his name. But anyway, Joe's really into the punk rock scene, like really into it. So I'm going to have him open the show. Now, if I have people open for me, and I just had someone else open for me, um, Steve Simone, recently did a phenomenal job down here in Florida. I like to start using him more. Um, it takes a lot for me not to have you back. You have to bomb horrendously. You have to be filthy, dirty comic where I'm like, yeah, man, it's just not my, I love what you do, but it's just, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna flow with the show. So just, just get by, be somewhat funny. Joe shows up with his father and little did he know he loves his father. I mean, he loves his father. Little did he know he was already in. All he, all he had to do is just be halfway decent. And that was the beginning of me and Joe's relationship. The fact that he had his dad. And then we came very close. Um, a lot of therapy together. A lot of family stuff. We, we'd share our family struggles and stuff like that. Um, and he just constantly, constantly, he wants to be a great comedian. He really does. So... I think Joe is really starting to blossom, really starting to blossom. And I just want to give you an example. And continually, every guy, I don't do it with, I, I, I do it each one of my guys because all of them are so funny off stage. And I'm not saying they're not funny on stage, but I love trying to get that off stage person on stage. And Joe is, Joe is, Starting to get there. Um, like, for instance, I don't know if you have it with you, Mike. You know, when he left the um, anniversary that we had, he left us a message. And it was, uh, do you have that clip or no? Uh, I don't do? have it ready. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. I could tell everyone. So basically, it was Joe going, he sounded like a businessman. It's like, hey, um, Jim, um, this is extraordinary that um, you've reached a year um, and, you know, I'm here at the beach and I'm thinking of you. And we were on the podcast going, what the, who is this, like, what is he doing? And we called him. What episode was that? Like two episodes ago? Uh, 52. 52. 52. Watch episode 52. And you're like, what the, and we end up calling him like, who? <laughs> what is this Joe? Like Joe, he's like, oh man, I was talking to my dad and he said, you know, I need to grow up. I'm 55 and stop speaking that way. I'm like, Joe, that's what makes you. Like, what are you talking about? It's over. You're, you're, <clears throat> excuse me. You're 55. You can't, but this is the Joe I know. Play this voice recording. He leaves me this voice recording when I won the champ, when my team won the championship, the Mets fantasy camp. Listen to this. Dude, that is so rad. There he is. Bro, you look awesome in the gear, dude. You look, dude, you look like a baseball player. There's no way you guys won it. Dude, 100 pitches a game. Your arm is going to be on fire. There's no way you can wipe your ass. There's no <laughs> way you're going to be able to wipe your ass, dude. You can't even get your arm that far back there. There's no way. Wow, man. Dude, congratulations. I can't believe it. Dude, next year, do the same thing. No training, no working out, eat chicken parm, martinis, go down there and claim it. Wow. Congrats, brother. Stoked for you. You hear the difference? That's oh, yeah. the Californian surfing Joe Sib, the skateboarder, the punk rocker. He said, dude, 15 to 20 times. He uses word like rad. Are we stoked? He's, he's, and that's the natural funny Joe. And I think he's getting pretty damn close to being that. So here, let's enjoy one of my favorite human beings, Mr. Joe Sib. Oh, and a, and a little, well, uh, little bit of information of people from the Bruniverse don't know. Uh, when Joe was in the band Wax, they were actually in the movie Biodome with oh, Paulie yeah. Shore and, uh, 
one of the Baldwins, whatever, which one that is. Stephen remember. Baldwin, because yeah. we so, when we started this tour, the last tour we were just on, um, we started in Atlanta and we hung out with Stephen Baldwin. I'm like, do you know Stephen Baldwin? He's like, dude, bro, I was in Biodome with him. I'm like, get, get out of here. So those two connected. It was really cool. Yes, he's in the movie Biodome. Yep. Um, During the big party. I no yeah. yeah, I had no clue. I had no clue he was in Biodome. So here you go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that table thinks Tony Dan's is here tonight. They're like, no way. They're like, why is he here? Oh my God, this dude thinks the singer for the Chili Peppers is doing comedy. Oh my gosh, it's so good to be here. How good does it feel to laugh and we don't got a mask on? That feels good. Check it out. Three days ago, got here to Denver, did my first flight without a mask on. Felt good. Felt good. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something right now. America looks a lot better with the mask on. It's just... I mean, some of you up, like you, sir, with the mask on, you're crushing it. It's just... She misses it. She asks for it when you come to bed. Don't forget the mask, honey. I... Me and you are the same. I love the mask. I'm crushing it from the bridge of my nose off, seriously. <laughs> During the pandemic, women are like, I love your eyes. What's your name? I'm like, my name's Joe. They're like, whoa, back it up. <laughs> While I'm on the plane, I did something that I'm so ashamed of. I, it's embarrassing. I sneezed on the plane. <laughs> And people got pissed. They got angry. And for no reason, I just took it to the next level and I threw a cough out there. I just, I didn't need to, but I said, what's gonna happen? And I threw it out there. And pe a woman stood up. She just stood up. He's a variant. That's a variant right there. She just, it was one of those women in like white pants in their 50s. I'm in my white pants tonight. <laughs> You know, those women that are like, I've been drinking Chardonnay since 2 p.m. What's your name? Hi. Hi, I'm going through my second divorce, still getting alimony. What's your name? If you're not laughing at this joke. <laughs> you might be a woman in white pants tonight. I saw a lot of you coming by. You wouldn't make eye contact with me. So one woman came over to me before the show. She's like, I love your hair. It's like you're going fast, but you're not. <laughs> I told Jim that. And he's like, damn, dude, you look like you're going a million miles an hour. You really do. <laughs> the side view is ridiculous. What's up? When this woman stood up on the plane, it was like, you're a variant. I, and she put a face to it. It's like she, like she saw something that I didn't know, and I thought, maybe I am a variant. I don't know. <laughs> you know, when someone tells you something, you start believing it. I'm like, maybe I'm the Italian variant. Maybe I am. <laughs> you know? Like, I could be cannoli virus. <laughs> What are the symptoms? My eyebrows are connecting. I don't know. <laughs> Got hair all over my body. I want chicken parm all the time. Let's do this. I'm thinking of moving back in with my parents in the basement. I don't know. People would be like, how do you get rid of it? I don't know. You're like, dude, put this white, tight wife beater on. Just put this on right now. Then put this gold necklace with this gold Italian horn on. Be gone in six days. Those are the things I think about, you guys. I just think it. I say it. Oh, man, before I came out to visit you people, I had a wonderful day at my house where... I gotta wait for AT&T to show up. <laughs> you know, what other job can you have where you can say, hey, you know, I'm gonna be there between 6 a.m. and maybe 7 p.m., I don't know. <laughs> if anyone from AT&T is here tonight that works for AT&T, uh, go die. Just, you know. <laughs> I know that's harsh, but none of us like you. <laughs> And you don't have AT&T. That's how bad AT&T is. They don't even have it. 
and you get on the phone with these people and they love to say things like, this call is being recorded for quality purposes. Really? Well, the quality sucks. It really does. You know, I canceled. I canceled at and but that took a full day and I went to their competitor where I live in Southern California. You're never going to believe the name of their competing company. A million dollar company going up against at and The name of the company is... Cox. <laughs> With an X. Because they're not going to be rude about it. Think about that. I have to work with a company called Cox. <laughs> they came up with that name. Think about anyone that's working here. You're sitting around throwing business ideas out. You know, these guys are like, we're going to make a multi-million dollar company. What should we name it? And the guy said, Cox. <laughs> and no one stopped them. <laughs> so I went to the, I called up and the woman answered the phone and she says, hey, are you ready for high speed internet? Yes, I am. You can stream anything. Yes, I am. We can do all the billing for you, it would all be online, and then she said these words, are you ready to try Cox? And I said, hell yeah, hell yeah. And now I got Cox all over my house. And when my friends come over, they're like, I love your Cox. Cox in the bedroom, Cox in the kitchen. My neighbor's like, I love your Cox. I love that. And now I'm worried if I don't pay the bill, like, are they going to come back and take my Cox? <laughs> oh, you guys are fun. Because we have a rule now for everything. There's a rule for everything. There's a sign for everything. Even at the hotel I'm staying at right now, you've all seen this sign a million times. If you currently are experiencing diarrhea or have had diarrhea, don't go in the pool. That's a sign. We don't need to go into detail. We know why we had that sign because uh, room 506 had a seafood enchiladas and they're like, damn, my stomach's killing me, babe. What are you gonna do? I gotta go down to the pool. Like, <laughs> and we know what happened. Some guy on a Monday morning was down there cleaning it up and he was pissed. Just like, <laughs> we need a sign. <laughs> people do this? We need a sign. <laughs> and he went to management and said, we need to have a meeting. They said, hey, Tom, Tom, take it down a little bit. We're going to table that till next year. He said, no, I want to have a meeting now. And they all got together and emails were sent back and forth. And they finally had the meeting. He said, Tom, what kind of sign do you think we should have? <laughs> and Tom said this, how about don't in the pool? meeting a woman stood up in right pants and she said no that might trigger someone <laughs> signs for everything you guys rules for everything I hate rules I hate them I hate them I grew up in the 80s. Punk rock hit the suburbs. I was there. The Ramones, Circle Jerks, uh, Social Distortion, The Misfits. Those were my bands, you know. Even in the 90s, Rage Against the Machine. F you. I won't do what you tell me. You hear that song, you're going to get fired up. Let's do this. You hear that song, you feel it. The other day that song came on. I was in my Prius. I tightened up my helmet. I was like, let's do this. <laughs> Zero to 75, 2.3 minutes in that Prius. And I went to turn it up and the Prius was like, you got to turn that down. <laughs> Rules. Everywhere I get it going. The road with Jim, I see the same sign in all your little neighborhoods. It's that, it's that little turtle, little yellow turtle holding a stick. A little stick, drive like your kids live here. If you're not laughing at this bit, it's about you. It really is. 
It's about you and that sign. And you telling me and everyone in this room what you gotta do. Hey, drive like your kids live here. Make sure. Really? Is that what you want me to do? Because do you know my kids? Do you know them? The Prius is gonna end up on the front lawn. It's gonna happen. And after the show, there's always someone that rolls up. I didn't like that joke about the sign, Joe. It's a sign for Satan. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. We just need a sign that everyone in this room could get their head around, right? A sign that everyone, just a sign you see tonight, and you're like, well, you know what? I gotta tighten it up a little bit. You know, like if you're driving home tonight after the show, you've had a couple cocktails, but you see a sign that says something like, drive, like you just left the bar, and there's a cop behind you. You're gonna tighten it up when you see that sign, right? You're gonna be like right up front, like, whoa, babe, we gotta tighten it up. And you're gonna look over at your wife and be like, roll down the window. If we're cold, we're sober. You guys invented that. You invented it. You're gonna be like, you know what? We should take our shirts off. That's what we need to do. Let's take our pants off. Okay, here we go. There's three naked people trying to get home, okay? And you get pulled out, you just pop out naked. We're naked, but we're sober. How are you? <laughs> motorcycle riders. Where are you motorcycle riders here tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Loud motorcycles. You love it. You annoy everyone and you love it. <laughs> You just love to just, you know, we're on the freeway in the morning, coffee, and you just zip up, right, we're just, yes. <laughs> just trying to listen to some NPR, here we go. <laughs> and you love it, because you go by and you, right, like that, and you, yeah, what's up? <laughs> it's always one guy doing that, he's by himself. <laughs> You know, and I get it, because you need the attention, and I, I know why. I know why. I know why your dad never played catch with you. I get it. Right? Dude, I own a Prius. My dad and I just threw the ball around all the time. Anyone here with a minivan, you had a dad that was throwing bombs to you. You know? I get it, man. That's why in my Prius, when a dude like you goes by, I follow him. I get up alongside him. And I got two baseball mitts in that Prius. <laughs> and I always look at him. They're like, what are you looking at? And I take up the mitts and I go, you want to play catch? <laughs> you better not be fooling. You better not be fooling. Serious? All right, I'll play catch. I'm on the side of the freeway throwing pop flies. What's up? What's your name? Jesse. Ah, oh, Jesse, give me that again. Here's a grounder. The divorce wasn't your fault, buddy. Come on. Come on. Before I have it, Jesse leaves the motorcycle on the side of the road, just gone. I always say the same thing as I ride away. Be good, and I'll come back and play catch again with you. You know, it's funny because he's so different now. Now when I'm with Joe, he's completely starting to talk more, which personally I think he's so much funnier. Like when he's in the yelling zone, I'm like it's, it's not normally him. I think he's I think I rub off on him a little too much sometimes, like because I'm I'm loud. I'm loud. My kids tell me like, Dad, oh my God, you're so loud. You're too you're loud, Dad. Um, he's definitely, um, since I've linked up with you guys last year from then till now, he's definitely coming into his own. He's a lot more confident on stage with his jokes and his, his yes. storytelling and stuff. Yeah. He's very, very confident. His confidence level has gone up. He's, um, yeah, I really like where he's going. I really like where his standups going. Uh, even, even, even watching some of those bits too, like that, the Cox bit, that's when he first really was starting it. And he was so excited because he had this new clever bit. And he was like, oh my God, I'm going to show the world. Um, but I love the more he, the more he talks and the more he brings in his isms, the dude, the rad, are we stoked? Stuff like that. The more excited I get for him. So 
this should be a really good year for Joe Sib. All right, so our next guy, I've known Brian a long time. Brian McKenna, I was looking for a um, an opener, and um, someone suggested Brian. Brian to me looks like if I had it, if if I was a producer or a casting director, I would cast him in every every like family film where he's like the either the uncle or a cop or 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 like a bouncer. He's got such a deeper menacing side to him that's really like Brian McKenna has this subtle anger inside him, which makes me laugh so hard. Me, him, and my daughter, Gabrielle, went on tour. And she would write, she would write down for him top 10 things that piss Brian McKenna off. And it was the funny, because that's all he did. All he does is complain all day. He's like, you know what really pisses me off? And he would just go off and on. I'm like, when are you bringing this to the stage? Because this is hilarious. <clears throat> I hope Brian's well. I've watched him get married. I watched him get a dog. <laughs> I watched him go through a lot of different emotional stages in his life. And I've watched him continually grow as a comedian. And I love this guy. Um, check out Brian McKenna from Long Island. It's good to be here, man. I'm from Long Island, so it's nice to be back. It's nice to be back out here, yeah. Typical Long Island, we had to start the show late for you people. Everyone else had to park in Northport. I know, I know what's up. There's no parking in Huntington and Memorial Day weekend. Are you drunk? Jesus. I like you guys though, man. A nice eight o'clock show. I know, I know, I get it. You guys all had that same look on your face when you came in. You all had that like, look, I want to go out, but I want to be in bed by 9.30. So how do I do that? It's been it's been a long week. I mean, I'll go. We got a lot going on. We got the Barbara Kill, and I gotta do a little landscaping. All right. <laughs> look at you, Nanya. I know. I know what's up. I'm, look, man. I'm I'm 34 years old. I am always on the verge of canceling my plans. Like even this. <laughs> I woke up. I'm like, I'm not doing that show. There's no way I'm driving out to Long Island. I live in the city and I drove out of here week. I drove out on the Belt Parkway. So we have, let's, let's discuss the Belt Parkway for a second. Let's discuss the Belt. Okay, what, what are they building on the Belt Parkway? It, it's been 29 years of construction. I, I, what, is, what is it? Have you ever driven by? The construction workers, they look confused when you drive by. You drive by, they're like, People are like, we're gonna go to Mars. I'm like, fix the Belt Parkway. And then I'll go anywhere you wanna go. I hate that road, man. There is a funny, there's a funny billboard on the Belt Parkway, if you guys ever get down there. Uh, I know nobody actually leaves Long Island once you move here. Like, I'm staying, you know, that's what everyone does. But I was driving out, there's a giant billboard, it's the funniest billboard, it's by that, uh, that Ponzi scheme casino that they have, you know, that that world resorts thing. I'm like, no one has ever been there. I don't know anyone that's ever been. <laughs> it's this giant billboard though, black and white letters. It says, are you going to heaven or hell? Call this number. <laughs> but it's a New Jersey phone number. Like even God is like, I can't afford New York City. That's ridiculous. I called the number though. I'm like, I, I have to know. I have to know where I'm headed. I, I, I have to know. Nobody answered. Purgatory, I guess. I guess that's where I'm at. I am, uh, I'm, I'm Catholic too, man. I'm, I'm Catholic, born and raised. Yeah, well, yeah. All right, look, I'm, I'm Catholic, but I'm Catholic like just in case. You know what I mean? I show up on the holidays like, hey, I'm here just in case. This is for real. I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> You, like, you ever meet those people who are like, I'm an atheist, I believe in nothing. I'm like, are you crazy? Nothing? You believe in nothing? No that is, I don't have, I don't have the confidence. Cause you, let me tell you something. I don't have the confidence. You have to be like, to believe in nothing, like you have to be right. Like,
like, if you're wrong, have fun with that conversation with God. When you get up there and he's like, oh, uh, for real, you didn't believe in nothing? You're like, I didn't even read the book, man. I thought there'd be a movie. I don't know. Like, that's why I'm Catholic, man. I don't have the, I don't, I don't, I don't have the balls. I don't. I really don't. It's nice to be finally out, though, man. It's nice to be back out. Everyone's back. I'm back to traveling, man, which is nice. Yeah, it's great. We're doing it. This was very illegal like three months ago, this entire show. <laughs> no, I'm back, man. I just got back from Arkansas, which, uh, that's the appropriate response for Arkansas. That is, yup, that's where, that's where my career is at. People are calling me, they're like, you want to make $80 in Arkansas? I'm like, yes, yes, I do. I'd like to make the 80 bucks, yes. It was the first time in my life I didn't have a bad flight, though. First time in my life, I sat in the emergency exit row. Uh, or as I like to call it, first class white trash, baby. I love, woo! Woo, I love that emergency exit row. That is my favorite place, man. But I did, all right, I did make a mistake when I got, up, I got on the plane. Right before I got on the plane, I took an edible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which look, I suggest everybody do. Just don't sit in the emergency exit row. Because they mess with your high the second you sit down. I have this woman walks up to me. She's like, in the event that the plane crashes, Are you willing and able to help us? But I was peeking at that point, man. I'm like, I'm like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm like, is the plane crashing right now? Is it crashing right now? I'm like, cause I can't lift my arms right now. So we, I'm like, <laughs> tell the pilot to crash in an hour. Tell him to crash in like an hour bring back pretzels. <laughs> I love the emergency exit row, dude. I love the emergency exit row. Cause I always like, I like sitting in that seat and I like looking at the other people. I like sizing them up too. Cause I'm always like, this is it. This is the Avengers team we've assembled. Iron Man wearing Crocs and me. Okay, all right, let's keep this flight in the air, Delta. Nice, man. I'm, I'm 34 years old, which is cool. I like getting older, but uh, I'm starting to learn that it's like losing. As you get older, you start losing superpowers that you, you didn't realize were superpowers. You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't know that, like, after 30, that hangovers last four months. <laughs> you remember being young? Like, in my 20s, I could drink till 4 a.m., wake up, and be like, let's do a Tough mutter, bro. I'm all right. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm fine. I, I had a beer two weeks ago. I, my stomach hasn't been right since. Like, I don't... It's crazy, man. If you're at a certain age, it's just nuts. I just got married, too. I got married two weeks ago, which is nice. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I got, uh, I, I should clap. I got, well, I'll tell you about the engagement. I got engaged at a weird time. I got engaged uh, March 10th, 2020. <laughs> Six days before the lockdown, man. It was, it was like we told the world, we're in love. And the world was like, we'll see. We'll see about that. <laughs> Keep being cocky, dick. We'll see. <laughs> Getting engaged was scary, man. That was a scary time. Because you got to spend three months' salary on a wedding ring. Three months' salary on a wedding ring. I remember thinking, like, I can't believe I have to spend seven the five dollars on a ring. I can't believe it. I... It's crazy when you start making up like, when you buy a big purchase like that and you start justifying it in your head, you're like, you know what? I've been eating breakfast way too much anyway. I don't, nah, I don't need to do, or lunch, who cares? It's fine. My wife is uh, Canadian, which is a uh, nice, yes, Canadian. I was a little too excited, all right. She's Canadian, man, which is nice. Just in case some stuff really goes down here, I'm hopping that fence, bro. I'm hopping right over. She's Canadian. The first time we went out, I didn't totally understand her. It was the first time we went out. She was like, look, um, I'm on a visa. But I was like, look, I'll pay cash. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, I'm like, I got a MasterCard. That's priceless, so. I can Venmo you, I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> it 
it's kind of interesting when you get uh, when you get engaged to somebody, you know, like who needs a green card, you know? Because my my wife was very upfront with that. She was very upfront with it. She was like, "Look, I need a green card." Let me tell you something. When you propose to somebody who needs a green card, it's way easier. Because <laughs> like I kind of knew the answer. You know what I mean? Like. Like, she said yes in my head. I was like, yeah, like, you had a goddamn choice, honey. It was, it was yes or ice fishing for the rest of your life, so. <laughs> it's not her favorite joke, but whatever. But when you get engaged with someone who needs it, like, you don't realize, man, it's kind of interesting because you become, like, you become that person's sponsor to stay in the country. And I like to remind my wife of that every so often, you know what I mean? Like, I walked into my apartment recently, I was like, oh, the laundry's not done. I'm like, hmm. Wonder what the US government's gonna think about that. <laughs> I'm like, are you and marry those socks? Just saying, honey, just saying. <laughs> I love my wife, though. I love her. I love her especially because we hate the same stuff. Love is great, but when you can hate something equally, whoa, that's, that's perfection, man. That is, like we hate our neighbors. No, like I hate them so, like I wish they were here so they can hear me say, like I hate these, like I hate them. All right, cause I live in New York City, man. All these people do is fight next door. It's all they do and I have very thin walls, okay? Very thin walls and all these idiots do is fight and then when I see them in person, I have to pretend that I haven't been listening and choosing sides in the arguments. I saw the guy recently and he was like, hey Brian, how you doing? I was like, well, I'd be a lot better if you were home a little bit more. I'm like, you've been at the office a lot, Jeremy. Who you banging, huh? Who you banging? You guys have been an amazing You know, audience. Brian, he's not, a, he's not a, uh, a weed guy at all. And he had problems sleeping. So I said, you know, I know some people that like, they take edibles. I go, you know, I take like five milligram, two and a half milligram. Cause yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll try that. Maybe I'll try that. Help me sleep. And he gets on a flight. <laughs> I gotta get him to come on and talk about it. He gets on a flight. And the next time I saw him, he's like, that was a bad mistake. I said, what's the face? He's like, it was bad. I was freaking out. He goes, not only is I freaking out, he goes, I didn't realize it last a while. It didn't kick in to halfway through the flight. And he goes, he didn't realize the flight was only an hour. And so he gets off the flight and he's with like his wife and the family and stuff like that. It was a freaking funny story. I was going to tell the whole story. Um, I got to get Brian back out there. I forget Brian. Brian and I have shared a lot of funny moments together. I, I forgot. I forget. It's so funny watching this stuff because it's almost a year ago. I want to say it's almost... It's a long time ago when we filmed this thing, almost a year ago. And I, that's why I was confused with Joe with the mask. I'm like, is he still talking about a mask? Like, is any? But now I realize it's as soon as things started clearing up that we started putting all this stuff together. So, all right, now let's go to the man down under, Monty Franklin, who um, is a great guy. He also just got married. He did his first Joe Rogan experience a couple months ago. And um, he tours a lot with Rob Schneider. So if you've seen Rob Schneider, most likely you've seen Monty as well. So Monty's a really good human being. He's trying to make it here as a stand-up comedian. And um, yeah, he's a pleasure to bring along. So check out any, he, if you've been to shows, I'm sure you bought his little koala bears after the show. He's got these little, he's like, can hey, hey, sign these little koala bears. And all the chicks love his accent. He's a big blonde Australian guy. You freaking love this guy. Long Island. I like your town. I like your area. Makes me feel like I'm in Goodfellas. We lost a good fella this week, so it feels right to be here. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. I am from Australia. I want to tell you something about my country that you might not know, that I really want you to know, okay? <laughs> this is a true story. In 1932, the Australian government went to war with the emus. Do you guys know what an emu is? 
That's a large flightless bird native to Australia, much like an ostrich. What happened, there was 20,000 of these birds running through the outback, tearing up farmers' crops. So the army came in with tanks and machine guns and went to war with the emus. Now this is the best bit, I'm not making this up, please look it up. We f***ing lost. <laughs> we lost twice, we tried again in 1945. We got outsmarted by wildlife. So I had to move here to America where you guys can protect me from the birds. <laughs> I love living here in your country, I've been here for 10 years. Yes. I can't get used to handshakes, that's the one thing, still can't get used to. In Australia, if you shake someone's hand, it's just vertical, just two pumps, just one, two, and then on with your day, that's it, that's all that happens. But some of you, some of you, after the handshake, have just attached your own choreographed dance party, and I'm meant to know the moves, I don't know what you're doing. You're clicking and snapping, there's all this pageantry, I just make a dick of myself. Do you know how many times people have come up to me for a regular fist bump, like, hey man, how you doing? And I just go, oh, hi, and just hold their fist. <laughs> Is that it? Am I cool? <laughs> I don't want anyone to get offended tonight. These are just jokes, remember that, all right? People are getting very easily offended these days. And then everyone's worried about saying the wrong thing, and I know you are, because you do the same thing that I do. If you're driving along in your car, and you've got passengers in the car, and you answer a phone call and it goes on speakerphone, the first thing you say is, just letting you know that you're on speaker and there's other people in the car. <laughs> Think about that. You may as well say, don't talk about the shit we usually talk about. There's other people here, they won't get our humour and they'll judge us. <laughs> Everyone's terrified of offending. You can't offend Australians, you can't. You tried, you tried with Outback Steakhouse. You tried, you tried. <laughs> F*** you America, how dare you. That's just a fabrication franchise throughout your entire country. That's a complete mockery of my whole culture. What is a bloomin' onion? I've never heard of that in my life. It's a staple dish at this establishment. <laughs> I'm not offended by it, I think it's funny. I had something very offensive happen to me when I first moved to America. So I was in Los Angeles and I'd just done a stand-up show and a lady came up to me afterwards like an older lady and she went, I'm having a private party down at my house in Malibu. It's all Australian themed. I'd like you to come and perform. And I thought, oh, that sounds weird. And then she said, I'll pay you $3,000. And I went, I'll do it. So I went down to this party. She would have spent $200,000 on this afternoon garden party. It was all Australian themed for her 30 friends. That's all that were there. I was the only Australian there. It was f***ing weird. It was like an Australian version of Get Out. That's what it felt like. <laughs> and I said to the lady, I said, do you want me to get up and tell jokes? Do you want me to do stand-up? Is that why I'm here? And she said, no, 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 I don't want you to do that. I just want you to walk around and just be Australian. That's what she said to me, and then, I'm not making this up, she handed me a kangaroo, a real life kangaroo, I don't know where she got it, on a leash, and I walked around her backyard, just going up to her 30 guests with a kangaroo on a leash, going, g'day guys, how you going? Yeah, it's a kangaroo, I didn't expect that either. Shrimp on the barbie, dingo's got my baby, have a nice night! Like just the most cliche shit I could think of. <laughs> just picture how horrifically offensive that is. For any other culture, any other culture, 
But we're all laughing, because Australia doesn't count. And I know that, I know that. And I'm okay with that. But she couldn't do that to any other culture. She couldn't say to a couple of guys from India, okay, you Indian guys? Yeah, come on in, come on in. Okay, you're just gonna be in this 7-Eleven here, okay? And I want you to just get angry if anyone comes in. Just be like, ah, oh, get out. Stop reading the magazines, get out of here. She can't say that. And she can't say, okay, and you six Mexican guys, can you go on the other side of the fence and just try and get into the party the whole time? You're not allowed to get offended. That's the same shit as Crocodile Dundee here walking around the backyard with a kangaroo, isn't it? Can't have levels of offence. I'm scared of everything in your country. Your government scares me. You guys aren't scared of shit. Don't tell me the government scares you. You guys aren't scared. I'm not scared of anything in Australia. It's not a real place. It doesn't exist. You know, we were a convict settlement. We were founded by criminals. I looked it up. The first police force in Australia was just made up of the best behaved criminals. That's not a way to start law enforcement. So if you get pulled over for speeding in Australia, you can, you know, and the cop goes, oh, you were speeding back there. You can just go, oh, come on. And they go, yeah, good point. All right, get out of here. Go on, get out of here. That's all that happens. But here everything scares me. I'm scared of my credit score. I don't even know what it is. I'm too scared to look at it. Because if you look at it, it fucking goes down. What is this number that we've all been assigned that we're too scared to look at? Someone says, oh, we have to do a credit check. And you go, oh, no, 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 don't, don't look at it. I don't look at it. You shouldn't look at it. If you look at it, it goes down. Don't look at it. And they go, it's just a soft check. There's a soft check and a hard check. This is just a soft check. And you go, what's a soft check? They go, this is when we have like a peak. Like we go, oh, oh I saw it. Oh, this is a soft check. Saw it. And a hard check. They stare at it, go, look at this credit score. Gary, come and look quick. And they stare at it. It goes down. That's how I think that works. <laughs> Guys, that's it for me. My name's Monty Franklin. Thank you very much for letting me start the show. I appreciate it. Before I do go, I have two things I want to ask of you. Long Island, if you can. Uh, the first thing, can you follow me on Instagram? I know it's stupid, but it's the way of the world and we have to do it. I put good shit on there, I promise. Follow me on Instagram. Monty Franklin, like Monty Python, Benjamin Franklin. Uh, fuck, you'll get drunk and forget it. Never mind. The other thing I wanted to do, uh, I've been raising money because Australia was on fire a couple of years ago. You guys remember? So I've been selling these tiny little koalas, they clip onto things. So uh, last year I raised and sent the Australia Zoo $285,000 selling all these little koalas. So if you guys want to get a little koala on the way out, I'll be out the front. You'll see me out there. Come and say hi, I'd appreciate it. You know, it's funny, like Monty, during that, he would tell me the story. I'm like, is that story true? He's like, yeah, man, this lady just hired me to be straying. And he started telling me all these other things that they would make him do it Australia. He's like, it really bothered me. I, he's making a movie right now, um, or he's, he's in a process of this whole movie he's gonna film in Australia. And um, I had this whole funny vision for him for this another whole movie, just from out of his standup. He's a really he's a really good writer and clever guy, and I hope, I hope his movie goes through, but we'll see how it goes. So there you go, you had Joe Sib, Brian McKenna, uh, Monty Franklin, three completely different guys. And we're going to um, pull it in here at the end with another piece of my show, which I don't really know what we're playing because I don't watch what they send me, although I should watch it more. Uh, I just got the other half of yours from the Paramount. Ah! Okay. Yes. Of the more recent one. Yes, correct. All right, cool. So we'll go into that. And then um, we'll wrap things up here. And I hope you're enjoying this uh, stand-up special 
of me and the openers getting ready for chop down on Thanksgiving. You're going to have that one uncle. You're going to have that one character that's coming that's uh, going to probably end up crying. Uh, someone's going to get in a bicker about something. Someone's going to bring up something from the past. Um, it should be interesting for all of us this this Thanksgiving. Uh, there's still going to be some people going, you know, just, can you please, if you're not feeling good, don't show up. Um, I'm speaking of not feeling good, i got to clear up quick. This is, this is really starting to bother me. I'm going on day three here. But let's see what we got. I don't know, man. I feel pretty good, but I'm, I, I, I've had a couple, couple spooks this year. You know, last week, I got 55, and I feel good. Yeah. I can still squat. <laughs> and and I, feel, I feel decent, but things are happening. Like last week, you know, I'll just tell you. So, <laughs> last week, I'm about to do a show, and I have to pee. Like, every 10 minutes. I've never had this issue. So I'd, I'd go pee, but not a lot would come out. Just a little would come out. I'm like, well, that's all right. Maybe, maybe it's an off day. I don't know. <laughs> He's usually pretty good, but today, whatever. He's a little sloppy. All right, come on. We'll be all right. And then this is happening every 10 minutes, and it's not. And I feel like I have to, I feel it in here. I'm like, come on, man. What's, what's, and it's not coming out. And then I'm about to go on the stage, and I'm, I'm not a doctor, but I'm like, all right, if I, if I push, push it down, and then squeeze from behind, I'll get it open. Get it? down to the section and then from behind. Come on! Don't let me down! Please don't let me down! Please! And now I'm freaking out because I, I've had three daughters in my house, married 30 years, and I know... Do you see this means you got a urinary tract infection? Right? Girls would tell you, like, Dad, go get me some cranberry juice! <laughs> get a lot of it! <laughs> cranberry juice? Yeah, they gotta be every ten minutes! They gotta be every ten minutes! I said, oh, oh my god! I'm Guys don't get this, like what is going on? So I go on the stage, and I'm up there for a bit, and I come off the stage, and uh, by miracle, I'm going, where am I gonna, I gotta get cranberry juice. <laughs> and I come off the stage, and backstage are all these mixed drinks, there's pina coladas, there's jugs of cranberry juice, I went, So I go in, and I chunk the whole thing. And, uh, and I drink a lot of water. I'm gonna pee this thing out. Well, <laughs> uh, every 15 minutes it's going, and now it's getting worse. Like, so I get out in the middle of the night, I'm in a hotel room, I get out in the middle of the night, and I sit, and I sit when I pee. I have, And I, I have no problem with, with my masculinity. I am a alpha male, but I sit down when I pee. I've grown up with four women in the house. It's just, it's not worth it. It's not <laughs> worth it. It's not. It, it's just, it gets so degrading, that same old argument. It's, you know, I, I, my wife just taught him, do you, can you please wipe up after you trip everywhere? I go, what are you talking, I didn't trip, you don't feel yourself dripping. You don't feel yourself, you dripped all the way to the sink. You didn't, when did you put your pants up? When you're there, 
tell me exactly what you're doing, because I don't understand why there's drips to the sink. It makes no sense, Jim. Do you put your pants on? It's weird. What are you doing? <laughs> and it's just, you know, it's annoying, because... No, I don't know it drips. Do you think, you know... You think I'd do that on purpose? Like, what is she? All right. <laughs> side of the bed so when she steps out and go <laughs> hope you don't wear socks <laughs> so and trust me a couple times I, if I travel I tried a couple times like I don't have to sit down to pee but <laughs> Trust me, gentlemen, the first time you do step in your little drip, it's not a good feeling. <laughs> 2 a.m., you go into pee and you go, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, God. So, I sit down to pee, but now it hurts. And it feels like, it feels like like pellets are coming out. Literally, like I can feel. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is really bad. And I, I thought that was cranberry juice coming out. Yeah. Thank God I'm that stupid because. That would have been a terrible TMZ shot. <laughs> what do you think he was doing? Uh, so I guess I, I passed a kidney stone, didn't know it. Right, but I don't know that yet. As far as I know, I'm pushing out cranberry juice. <laughs> so this goes on all night, the next day, I call my wife, I said, on. I can't stop peeing, I got a urinary tract infection. And last night, between about 1, 1.30 a.m., I started peeing out all the cranberry juice. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I was peeing out the cranberry juice. Jim, your pee does not change color. <laughs> you were bleeding. So, I'm gonna go to the doctor. Cause we don't know it's a kidney stone yet. My back was killing me. I had a little fever. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. It's not good. It's not good. It's cramping juice coming out. I've got a fever. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> so, dude, I got. Doesn't matter how much money you make, man, when it comes to stuff like this and how cool you think you are if you wear salmon colored pants. Or like, <laughs> pee in the cup. All right. <laughs> so then uh, you take scans, scan here. And then uh, after the scans, like, okay, the doctor's going to come in and uh, check you when he comes in and uh, wait here. And he comes. He goes, okay, Jim, let's, let's go to the office here. And, uh, let's, let's come in here. And my wife goes, no, I'm, I'm coming in. Because I, I, he's not going to understand a word you say. 
He, he thought he was peeing cranberry juice. <laughs> <laughs> and even the doctor was like, oh, wow, yeah, no. You, your urine doesn't change color. Like, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already queasy like that. And so my wife comes in, and right away, you know, what happened? Well, I couldn't pee, you know, and your kidney stone, and day, I don't know. He says, okay, drop your, drop your pants and your underwear. <sighs> are you, are you, I, Jim, we're, we're gonna be married 30 years next year. It's not like I've never seen that. Let's, come on. Like, uh, <sighs> now, any man will tell you that even though I will be married 30 years, and my wife seen me not to the fullest <laughs> capabilities, but every man here is a liar. If he said he knew he could, he oh, every man, every man warms up a little bit. Even if it's just a little, it's just a little that, a little jump. Don't lie, we all do. I'm, every woman in here, look at him, trust me. You thought, trust me. Just a little. Just to go in the shower, like, you know, this is the smallest of using this. So. You don't want this thing getting nuts going in the shower. She goes, Jim, put your pants and hush, okay, and let goes down, and let's go down, and even he's like, well, you didn't tell me this is happening. <laughs> yeah, it's not my best work, and <laughs> and just you already feel so weird. My wife's staring at me, pants are down around. I got a guy on a seat at this level. <laughs> What, what happened? What happened? <laughs> Doing a show, and now I'm, so now he, he goes right in, goes right in, squeezes one side, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. lifts it up, he pulls it, yeah, that's all right, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything looks good. Then he goes, uh, let's just, let's check the prostate. <laughs> what do I know? I thought it was cranberry juice. <laughs> I said, uh, okay. Do I got a, is that another room? X-ray machine or? <laughs> and, and my wife laughs. <laughs> No. Oh my God. What, 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 is, what is going on in here? And he goes, elbows on the table. <laughs> Can I pull my pants up? We done with that part? Or? <laughs> elbows on the table. I was taught that's rude growing up. <laughs> So they go, so, oh my God. And then it hits me like, oh my God, I heard about that. And I see the glove going on. <laughs> I see the gel. <laughs> and I'm just going, oh my God. On my life. 
life, I'm just being dead honest. I'm now making decisions like, all right, how do I make this the easiest part? Do I perk myself up? Is that the right? But it's time we're gonna give him a bad message then. But that's going through my head. Like, is it easier? Do I, do I just pretend like, yeah, I was doing this. I ain't giving you nothing. You working for that. You working for that. I don't know how people do it. I don't know how. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Two more spots. What? <laughs> he says it's smooth. Which is good. And he just takes it out. <laughs> That was edited really well, because that, that bit is actually way in the beginning. I was surprised, and that was great, great edit job, man. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, at least I'm a little under the weather, so I'm, I'm getting a lot better. And I just really, 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 I'm really blessed to have these guys that are able to travel with me, to do stand-up with me. I love every one of these guys. They're good human beings. They're very funny comedians, and I hope you get a chance to see them where they're, wherever they are. Uh, I know Joe's starting to do some uh, headlining stuff. Brian McKenna's getting out there. Uh, he plays a lot in New York, and Monty travels a lot as well. So I'll continue to fight to try to put newer and newer material out there. I hope you enjoyed this, and I, the overwhelming uh, growth of this podcast is pretty incredible. And I'm um, glad that we put together something a little different, a little special, a little Thanksgiving holiday special, stand-up special. Do you do you have any uh, you have any uh, interesting holiday stories? Do I have interesting holiday stories? Many years ago, when my dad was alive, we had Thanksgiving at my house growing up, and my dad had ten brothers and sisters, all from Kentucky, and they uh, came to our house, a little tiny house in Long Island. And this garage is probably twice the size of what our kitchen was like. Our kitchen was also the dining room. We didn't have a dining room and a kitchen. It was all one spot. And um, it's kind of a gnarly story, but my dad, my dad's brother and sister-in-law came over and they were, she's very loud. She was very, very, uh, very boisterous. She's sitting right next to my dad. And my mom made terrible. My mom would get wasted on Thanksgiving and try to make mashed potatoes. And she, she never cooked them through. She, she, she didn't boil them enough. So when she made the mash, it was always chunks. It was, dis, it was horrible. It was disgusting. So it was already an issue eating mashed potatoes with the gravy. And we're all sitting at a table, like 10 of us. Some of us are standing in this tiny little room. And I'll never forget, my father just kept looking at Aunt Hermine to his left, and he's, and he's going, you all right? And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. And she's eating. Now, we have this tiny house with one little toilet, one bathroom, tiny little two-bedroom house, kitchen, no dining room. And uh, all these people are in there, and we're all on top of one another. I'm already skeeved out as a meat and the potatoes because they're not cooked. Where everyone's so wasted, it doesn't matter. And Aunt Hermine, just as I'm looking down there, starts to launch. She's launching out of her mouth onto my dad's plate. Well, projectile. And when I tell you, 
when I tell you, you got about 10, 15 people all triggered from this. There's a mad dash for the bathroom. Only one person can get in there. So just imagine the Brewer home, Valley Stream, Long people are running out of her house on into the yard, <laughs> into the bushes. You know, we, I remember I ran, I had no, I ran to my basement and I, and I, and I opened up the, I opened up the dryer. I was behind it. I was in a bit peep. We were, we were decorating uh, the front porch, the driveway, part of the neighbors, the tree in the front. And then this also, there were kids outside that would then trigger those kids. It was horrifying. But I think, I think the best part was my dad never flinched. He just stood there, watched it all go down. And he goes, Jesus Christ, you didn't see that coming. And she just kept, and then he just grabbed her. He, he grabbed it by the back of the shirt and he looked at his brother. He goes, will you control this situation for Christ's sake? Get her out of here. Big, and she had a big ass, like big lard ass. Get out of here, you lard ass. Jesus Christ. And I just remember the next day we were cleaning up for hours, hours. And I go, dad, it's, it's, he goes, did you find more? And we had pots of boiling water that we were, so we cleaned the house. Now we're outside. And I said, dad, it's bad. It's in the bushes. Jesus. It's on the grass. Jesus. But the worst was it was on the hood of our car. It was <laughs> definitely been one of the most epic Thanksgivings ever had in my family. Oh that was my a gosh. big drunken mess. But hopefully you won't have the same. I don't think we'll have the same. Just enjoy your Thanksgiving. Eat a lot. Make your sandwiches and all that jazz. And Mike, have a really, really, really good Thanksgiving. You and Annie. You um, too, man. I'm blessed you guys are in my life and you help me out with all this in the Bruniverse. And to all my fans uh, that message me, that direct message me, and all the Patreon members, I just, I love you guys to death. You're inspiring more and more to create more and more. And I promise you, I'm going to create a lot more this year, a lot more, and bring a lot more fun stuff to the Bruniverse. So we'll see you next week. Happy holidays. And um, thanks for listening. Take care from the Bruniverse. This is Jim Brewer, and I got my own Patreon page, and hopefully you'll check it out. Live comedy concert streamed once a month. Weekly, you host your own podcast, and you interview me. Early access to the Bruniverse podcast every single week, and I have bonus footage and bonus segments. I promise you I'm not going to let you down. Go check out my official Jim Brewer Patreon page, and I'll see you there. Woo!